It's a momentous occasion at the house of Motilal Oswal today as their AMC has reached a mega size of $2.9 billion. Uh, so welcome the three men who've been the pillar of growth and success at Motilal Oswal AMC. Join me on the show today, Mr. Ashish P. Sumaya, the MD and CEO, Gautam Sinha Roy, fund manager and senior VP, Siddharth Bothra, as well as the fund manager. So gentlemen, congratulations to all three of you. What makes the Motilal AMC tick? I think it's more, it's focus. I think that's, if it's in one word, it is being focused because uh, Motilal Oswal as a house is known for equities for last 30 years. Mm. Uh, the asset management, you know, the foundation was laid in 2003 more as a portfolio management service provider. And then we've been offering mutual funds and alternates over the last four years. So, but as a company, we are the only one in India, which is purely 100% into equity and within equity, it's a single philosophy. So I would just go around to say that it's focus. Mm. Gautam and Siddharth, if I have to pit both of you against each yeah. other, what would you say has actually worked? Has it been the large cap funds or has it been the multi cap and the mid cap funds which have worked better in the last four years? For us, you know, all the funds have worked very well in terms of alpha delivery. So, alpha for us uh, over the, the Kiger of alpha ranges from anywhere between 6 7 percent to 17 percent. So, you know, 17 percent versus 6 7 percent looks very good relatively but even a 6-7% alpha is great and all our funds are uh, up there in the top quartile across uh, time periods. Uh, so It's a momentous occasion at the house of Motilal Oswal today as their AMC has reached a mega size of $2.9 billion. Uh, so welcome the three men who've been the pillar of growth and success at Motilal Oswal AMC. Join me on the show today, Mr. Ashish P. Sumaya, the MD and CEO, Gautam Sinha Roy, fund manager and senior VP, Siddharth Bothra, as well as the fund manager. So gentlemen, congratulations to all three of you. What makes the Motilal AMC tick? I think it's more, it's focus. I think that's, if it's in one word, it is being focused because uh, Motilal Oswal as a house is known for equities for last 30 years. Mm. Uh, the asset management, you know, the foundation was laid in 2003 more as a portfolio management service provider. And then we've been offering mutual funds and alternates over the last four years. So, but as a company, we are the only one in India, which is purely 100% into equity and within equity, it's a single philosophy. So I would just go around to say that it's focus. Mm. Gautam and Siddharth, if I have to pit both of you against each yeah. other, what would you say has actually worked? Has it been the large cap funds or has it been the multi cap and the mid cap funds which have worked better in the last four years? For us, you know, all the funds have worked very well in terms of alpha delivery. So alpha for us uh, over the, the Kiger of alpha ranges from anywhere between 6-7% to 17%. So, you know, 17% versus 6-7% looks very good relatively, but even a 6-7% alpha is great and all our funds are uh, up there in the top quartile across uh, time periods. Uh, so everything has worked in terms of alpha delivery, but what you have to remember also is that, you know, large caps as a category have definitely underperformed mid caps in the last three years. And that's somewhere getting reflected in our performance also, you know. So multi cap fund and mid cap fund has done better than large cap fund in terms of absolute returns. But these things are cyclical. So going forward next three years, hopefully, large cap should do better. And hence, our large cap funds should also deliver better returns. Mm. So that in the last four years, sure. it's been a staggering 18 to 19% growth. And like Gautam just highlighted, right. maybe now uh, it could be the turn of the large caps to actually perform. Sure. From this 18-19% growth, what is it that we are staring at and what would you say would be your strategy? Would it be concentrated bets? Would it be a basket of nifty stocks? Would it be pure PSUs? Right. What would you say you need to do to be able to meet uh, or rather beat, I should say, Gotham's performance? Yeah, so see, uh, just to continue what Gotham was saying, uh, if you look at the last three years, the, the stark difference between mid caps and large caps have been very significant. Uh, uh, if you look at since inception of a large cap fund, uh, the index return, which is Nifty returns, would be around 11%, whereas uh, I think the mid cap index would be, you know, closer to around uh, 26, 27. It's almost like a 15 to 16% CAGR difference. And uh, uh, one of the reasons being that, you know, uh, the earnings, uh, uh, especially on the larger ones, uh, have been very subdued. 
So my sense would be that you know as we move forward, uh, the earnings growth which has been uh, uh, very subdued and weak over the last few years, they should pick up. We uh, uh, in a way also have a low base this year because of uh, the demod impact and couple of other uh, uh, issues also. And with many of these reforms playing out, so over the next two three years, I would think that you know the earnings growth should be very strong and uh, uh, there should be some kind of a, a, a you know a, a mean variance. Uh, uh, coming back on the large cap and mid cap side. Mm. So I would be more positive on the large caps uh, uh, going forward. Mm. Ashish Motilal Oswal is known for equities for the last 30 years like you all well highlighted and that I guess in the last four years ever since the large cap fund launch as a strategy has worked for you taking concentrated bets as opposed to diversified you're not even present in the fixed income side. Yeah. Is that a strategy which you're going to keep consistent for the next few years as well because it has worked, it's proven, it's out there? Yeah, so you know it is our stated objective to gain recognition as an equity expert. I mean in every industry, especially in our industry, there are a lot of players which are I would say supermarkets or bulge bracket players. And I would classify them as people you know who will offer whatever a customer can potentially buy. Uh, at our end, our motive is not to offer whatever a customer can potentially buy. Our motive is to create wealth through equity management. Mm -hmm. So we'll only offer what we are good at. We don't see us in the supermarket space. Our entire aim is to be a niche or a boutique or a specialized house. So yes, you know, you're right. We don't have any plans of launching fixed income. I don't think the market needs us to do that. There are very many respectable players who are good at fixed income. We think we are good at equity and we have some track record of how we can create wealth with equities. Gautam, you've been great at equities with your mid-cap uh, fund performance. What's the strategy now considering you yourself believe that maybe now is the turn uh, of uh, large caps to outperform? So as a strategy, what is it that you're doing in your small cap fund? Because now is the time when large caps are just about beginning yeah. to take off. So, you know, in uh, I manage the multi-caps. So yeah. where they, what we have been doing initially when we started the fund three years back, it was 50% mid-caps. That has come down. That has come down to more like 30% mid caps and 70% large caps. Also, in mid caps, you have to be very selective, and I would say across the board, because you know in stocks, individual stocks, there has been massive PE ratings across mm. the board. So anybody who has been in markets for 10 years will tell you that the PE ratio that we are looking at today has never been seen in the past. So how do you meet that challenge? The only way to meet that challenge, to me is if you buy expensive stocks, high PE stocks, which are also growing at a high rate. Because the best friend of a high PE ratio is high growth. Because then with compounding of growth, the PE ratio comes down over the next two, three years. And the worst enemy of a high PE stock is lack of growth. Mm. Because then you not only get the growth, you also get a PE uh, derating. So that kills your return. So we are very focused on that aspect, growth. You know, so we have this philosophy of QGLP. Today, the G part, especially today, is very, very important. If you don't get your growth right, you're going not going to make returns. And that's the challenge that's in this well-discovered market. So tell me, which have been your three best bets which have worked for you and given you staggering returns? So, you know, we go for compounding kind of returns, right? That's what we love the best. So across uh, funds, I think Ajanta Pharma stands out as one of our best performers. Mm. Aishar Motors is another one which has done really well for us. Then I think the bank pack, uh, HDFC Bank, Indusin Bank, that has really done well for us. Bajaj Finance has done very well for us. Mm. So those would be the few ideas which have really worked well for us. Right. So that what's the strategy? What are those three large cap stocks that you're betting big on in order to give that 20% return to your mm. investors? Currently, uh, financial is a segment where we are betting big on, especially, so if you look at, uh, say, the, uh, the large cap uh, fund that uh, is there, we almost have a 15% position in uh, insurance stocks. So uh, that's one segment you could say that, you know, we are betting big on um, because uh, this benefits from the entire shift that we are seeing from, uh, you know, the physical assets on the saving side to financial assets and within that also you know within the industry also we are seeing many uh, many positives like you know there's a, a consolidation happening at the top and uh, uh, the larger guys are not only uh, seeing increased market share but uh, you know they are at a cusp where their uh, margins are now improving sharply and also they are benefiting from uh, uh, you know the increased flows which are coming in so that that would be one segment we are betting big on otherwise 
our focus has been more on the consumer side, whether it be on the autos, uh, you know, uh, uh, the pharma side and some of the consumer names. So the uh, hunting ground remains the same. And Ashish, I guess that must be really working for your fund as well, right? The fact that the other asset classes, that's the yellow metal as well as real estate, not working at all. Are you sensing that being the CEO at the fund that, uh, again, that we're on the brink of that domestic flow actually yeah. come in? Soon we'll come to be at a time when FII flows wouldn't matter and all of us in the morning wouldn't be seeing what <laughs> FIIs did, whether it was a net buy or a sell figure. So, you know, taking off, I'll come to your question, taking off on the FII bid, just a mm. couple of statistics which I have seen. In 1991, there was no FII. Our market cap was 2 lakh crores. FII holding was zero. Today, we are nearly 125 lakh crores and FII holding is 25%. So, in a market which has gone from 2 lakh crores to 1 lakh 25,000 25, crores, 125 lakh crores, we've gone from zero FII holding to 25% FII holding. That's a big number to keep in mind. Second thing, FIs have sold dramatically four times in last 10 years. 2008, May 2013, December 2015, and then two months back. Yeah. What happened two months back was the first time when FIs sold and they did not find the market 25% lower. As recently as Feb 2016 when they sold, we traveled from 8,900 to 6,700. So what I'm trying to come to tell you is that this is the first time if there was anything called an FI, I mean, there are thousands of them, but if they're observing our market, this is the first time they'll notice that our market has behaved very differently. There was indiscriminate selling by FIs, but the market didn't tank. That comes to your question, you know, which is about domestic investors. And I think it's not to be seen just as a, you know, let's not look at it on a micro basis. If you ask me, this entire domestic thing is a, a transition. It's a significant trend change. You know, in 2020, 2025, if we were to make one of those fancy charts and look back, then I would put a red circle in December 2016 saying this is where it turned. Mm. Because I've been seeing this nearly for 20 years now. And I used to meet a lot of people 20 years back and tell them, why don't you put money in equities? Like the famous ad in Maruti, it says, Kitna Degi. <laughs> I, I, I had no answer to give them. Because after a long winded monologue, I would end up telling them 15% or you know some such, you build up the, uh, the number. And then RBI bonds used to be 11% tax free. So at the end of a long meeting, I was told, you know, you can take Leave. a walk. Yeah, take a walk. <laughs> but I'm sure some of uh, the small and mid caps that Gotham's have been dealing in have given far better returns than that 15%. Yeah, and now well. the 10 year tax free bond is 5.8%. Yeah. And even that has a PE. The problem with equities, people calculate PE because it has an E and the E can grow. Your tax free bond is at 17 times PE right now. 16 times P right now, and there's no G which is going to bail you out. So relative comparisons are very important, actually. So things are going good from here and are only going to get better? Yeah, I think it's going to get better because habits change with generations. And we are seeing a generation change in terms of who's our investor now versus who our investor was 15 years back. So it's here to stay for sure. Well, it's been a great discussion so far, but when we come back, we'll find out exactly that. How does Motilal Oswal AMC, after reaching the size of $2.9 billion in the AMC, plan to target the new investor out there on the street? In conversation with Ashish P. Samaya, Gautam Sinha Roy, as well as Siddharth Bhotra, the fund managers and the MD and CEO at uh, the house of Motilal Oswal AMC and celebrating their mega asset size in their AMC of $2.9 billion. But Gautam, considering your fund has posted, what, a CAGR return of 30%, the question for the new investor out there on the street, or for that matter, even for the existing ones, would be whether or not you can continue to give these kind of returns in the next few years to come as well? It's a very important question. It's important to remember that ultimately what you're trying to do is beat inflation and beat it by a healthy margin. So inflation in India has structurally come down from 10% what Ashish was referring to earlier to now more like 5%, right? And we believe that's structurally going to remain low globally and in India too. So in this environment with a low inflation, your hurdle rate is low. So you don't necessarily need a 30% or a 20% return going forward to uh, preserve and enhance the purchasing power of your wealth. What you need is probably 5% plus a delta of 5 or 10. So 10 to 15% returns even could be very good provided inflation remains at 5%, which we believe will be the case going forward. So, so in your multi-cap fund, which are, which are those pockets that you think are going to lead you to that kind of growth numbers? So 
in fact across the fund when i look today i am very confident of uh, you know the earnings growth being in that range uh, even in an environment in the last 3 years where the index the headline earnings growth has not been there simply it's been zero we have been delivering 20% earnings growth in the multi cap fund you mean with ajanta pharma aishar and banks you he- hope to be able to target those kind of numbers yes obviously we have a few other names also and we mm. keep changing that mm. so what happens is if the prospective returns of a stock becomes really low or negative then we look for a new idea or a better idea so the idea is to keep the portfolio chugging at a 20% earnings growth and then as ashish was also referring to earlier what will happen is the index uh, or the fund performance will mirror the earnings growth just like index mirrors earnings growth mm. any portfolio should ultimately reflect the earnings growth so the our entire focus is to ensure that we get that 20% or 15% depending on the context that we are in kind of earnings growth and make sure that we are not buying overly expensive stocks so that is that is the underlying method you know behind delivering superior performance mm, so that i understand your point yeah. about insurance because that perhaps to my mind is the most under penetrated space uh, right. but pharmaceuticals that must be giving you sleepless nights considering how heavy the clampdown of the US FDA is i mean how do you juggle within the pharmaceutical space have you ever thought to yourself that maybe this is not the best space to be in and yeah. you know move around your allocations see i think you know whether it be the pharma sector or you know in the it sector which have been challenged uh, recently because of the external environment uh, what matters is that you know you have to do a uh, bottom up uh, investing so uh, if you look at the pharma stocks uh, uh, itself like you know the some of the stocks names that we mentioned whether it be say ajanta which was in our portfolio or alkim they were very bottom up ideas and uh, you know bottom up ideas work across sectors in all at different times so uh, you can have a entire sector which is challenged due to uh, maybe you know global factors or uh, internal uh, you know domestic issues and so on but there will always be uh, you know one or two uh, standouts and pharma as uh, you know as a sector has been one of the most favorite hunting grounds for identifying multi uh, bagger ideas and uh, uh, you know i think are it will continue to be so on the avenue so they they, they Which definitely you are cannot ones cannot name but describe <laughs> we definitely are ones and so, uh, you know pharma as well as it and some of these sectors uh, uh, you know we we have always we continue to look at it uh, very keenly because we think uh, irrespective of the challenges facing the sector there's always uh, uh, you know that uh, possibility of identifying some good bottom up ideas which would give you non linear returns mm. and uh, just I to think... add to that sorry uh, pharma is a personal favorite sector of mine see remember pharma is not a very homogeneous sector like mm. banking or mm. insurance mm. it's a very heterogeneous sector there are multiple different business models the domestic plays there are the us generic plays and very plays, complex there are the yeah. cramps yeah they are complex but in complexity sometimes lies opportunity right so they are complex but not complicated mm. so you have multiple set of companies very different very addressing very different markets and all these addressable markets are huge so uh, you know for uh, fund managers stock pickers who are looking for compounders it's a, it's always a happy hunting ground in india in any part of the cycle you will find a pharma stock which will be attractive that is the beauty about that sector and have you made any such recent um, acquisitions in the pharma space so uh, generally speaking we have been looking at the you know contract research and manufacturing side of the story uh, uh, lately because you know what is happening is the drug innovators they are under huge pressure to reduce their budgets because pharma uh the drug development costs are really high they can run into a few million few hundred million dollars in cases so uh, what we are seeing is that uh, there is a value migration happening so they are trying to do outsource the research that they used to do parts of it to low cost places like india just like it services was uh, migrated uh, in the 1990s so that is an opportunity which is coming up beautifully it's it's been there for a while but finally we are seeing some indian companies gaining traction there so interesting space to watch out for for mm. sure okay uh let's talk about what's not worked for you siddharth and uh, it's some of these liquor stocks because that seems to be such a confusing space again there's the yeah. government clamp down coming on some of these banned taboo products uh, is that something now that you're contemplating that maybe it's it's a complete avoid or an exit 
No, I don't think we're coming to that conclusion. So, um, you know, we, we definite whenever we look at a stock, you know, our, n- normally our horizon is a long term one. So uh, United Spirits uh, uh, in particular, the, you know, one stock that that's been one of the drag in our portfolio. Uh, uh, the reasons being obviously so many regulatory issues have uh, come up and, you know, the entire uh, uh, reorganization has taken more time than, you know, what we would have initially thought. But I think if you just look at the core strength of the company, the core, uh, you know, the overall potential uh, uh, for the liquor industry in India, the entire demographics, which, you know, works in its favor. I think the uh, overall uh, duopoly nature of the industry itself, especially at the premium side, uh, I think, I think, you know, the uh, opportunity size here is so big that we would rather have more patience here and, uh, uh, you know, reap the benefits than, uh, you know, throw in the towel at a wrong time. So, you know, Aisha, one of your calls, which has worked very well for you, that's been a bit of a fad stock. You know, it's a fad story. Everyone aspires to have a Royal Enfield bike. Do you really think that Aisha can actually post the similar kind of returns? Or is it because your acquisition cost was so low, you will always be in the money and lots of it? So people have been asking us this question for the last three years to be, uh, you know, uh, (laughs) so every time whenever we meet investors, whether it was at 10,000 and so on. So one of the common... Uh, questions is that look you know this stock has gone up from 600 to that's a valid one yeah yeah but you know uh, the the fact remains that uh, you know the product uh, uh, you know there's really no uh, major competition to it till now and uh, you know uh, even post demod it has a very fairly large waiting period and uh, that's a segment which you know uh, in a way uh, uh, as a percentage of the total premium bikes still uh, you know as the premium bikes as a two wheelers continue to remain low so, uh, uh, you know, uh, and till now they've been focusing largely on the India market. They are now looking at globally also. So I think any company, uh, you know, of the kind Aisha, which is very focused, is in a niche segment and uh, where competition as such, uh, you don't have any direct competition. I think that's where when you look at our investment philosophy of QGLP, uh, you know, it's the letter L, which is stands for longevity, which comes in play. I think most of the investors have, uh, you know, not focused so much on the longevity uh, part here. So I think these kind of stocks have fairly longevated uh, growth, whether it be, say, on the spirit side, couple of stocks we mentioned, or mm. whether it be here. So I, uh, you know, uh, I think that's where uh, the big surprise uh, is always there, where you know the growth path itself could be much longer than uh, just the next year's uh, number that people normally are fixated with. Mm. Gautam, HDFC Bank and Indusind Bank have worked, but what's not worked is SBI. Uh, do you think, I, I mean, I recently heard this phrase called on the runway, where people <laughs> don't, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter how long they're on the runway, they know the yeah. flight's going to take yeah. off. Is SBI that kind of a story? Yeah, yeah. yeah I also use this Karan Arjun analogy, you know, <laughs> the entire movie Karan Arjun Aenge, Karan Arjun Aenge, that's what the mother used to say. But Karan Arjun does come finally. So the NP problem is just like that. It will finally get solved, right? No one uh, denies that. But yeah, we have been very patient with it, but our patience has been tested. So, so certain good things have happened, you know, the current management has really delivered. Quality-wise, SBI really stands out today among the, um, among the PSU banks especially in the new lending that they have done in the last five years. That's one thing. The other thing is that they have also the subsidiary SBI life insurance, as, mm. uh, uh, as Siddharth was saying, that we really like the insurance space. So there are a couple of uh, redeeming points about the stock. The, the third most important redeeming point is the valuation, which is still pretty cheap. So, you know, and uh, again, the Karan Arjun story remains that... So you're willing to be Rakhi yeah, and wait for Karan Arjun We are to being unite. Rakhi even now, <laughs> okay. so let's put it that way. Right. Ashish, what's the strategy for the fund as such? Is it the psychology, as the psychology student would say, KISS strategy, keep it simple, stupid, just be concentrated, do not diversify too much, equity is the place to be, which is going to take you from $2.9 billion to $6 billion eventually? Yeah, I mean, I recently read that, you know, a lot of your success and your positioning depends on what you say no to. Mm. It doesn't depend on what you say yes to. So I think my job is to say no to a lot of things, which I work hard to keep to. Mm. The other thing is that, you know, in our industry, uh, differentiating ourselves uh, has been one of the key things that we've worked on. And what I notice is that there is a lot of promotion which happens around products and their performance. And what we realized is that when you're in the equity space, you don't control share prices and NAVs. The performance is just the outcome. 
in a when you're playing a game of uncertain outcomes you can't control the outcome of course the only thing you control is the input and the consistency and quality of inputs so that's how you know our entire focus is on developing the investment philosophy ensuring that we consistently communicate only the philosophy because that's the input as long as we control the input we can have some consistency of outputs so the focus is on investing more in the investment practice and not investing so much in the other areas of the business so siddharth what's the strategy from here for your large cap fund are there places and pockets which you find within large caps which are still um mm -hmm. under discovered under owned psus the lnts of the world are there pockets that you've identified for yourself see i think our focus areas are the segments that we focus on you know which would qualify for the kind of characteristics we look which is largely what we call the qglp remain same so i don't think our investable areas would change very significant it would still be uh, you know some of those consumer discretionaries the pharma uh, you know um, and you know some of these uh, the related teams, kind yeah. of uh, uh, on the financial side in some of these sectors so i think within them itself uh, many of these companies the under penetration is so high uh, you know and you know basically they many of them are at a cusp and uh, uh, as and when the market grows uh, many of these most of them are bottom up ideas and uh, they 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 would itself uh, you know take on from there so more than trying to identify uh, new areas we are you know more focused on identifying the right uh, ones within the uh, you know the key uh, sectors that we normally focus on and uh, uh, obviously you know there's always new ideas and new segments which come in so i'm not trying to say that we are close to that those are uh, anyways there but i would think that the bulk of the fund would continue to be uh, you know in the areas of the segments we already in and uh, uh, there's enough opportunity that we see there itself so buy right and sit tight gautam that's yeah. the strategy always okay gentlemen congratulations once again well that was our special discussion with the three men who are the pillars behind the motilal oswali mc and their staggering asset size of 2.9 billion dollars Find us on Facebook at facebook.com/etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com/user/etnow.